Here it is, episode two of Robert's Indie Adventure. Deliver it with more emotion. Think big tent? You're sure? Oh, okay, okay. Here it is! Episode 2 of Robert's Indie Adventure! What do you mean that wasn't Big Tent? Oh, come on! What do you mean, who am I talking to? The dog! In breaking news, local man turns Chevy Venture into a camper van. Taking the Venture and we are going to convert it into my tiny little living space. It's not exactly uh, RV sized by any measure. Either way, the uh, Venture actually isn't too bad for interior space uh, for a minivan. I could like honestly engineer this thing out the nines but um, Probably not going to do that. So what I'm doing right now is because basically I got to figure out the uh, inside space and dimensions. Then I can figure out kind of like what I can build in these areas and whatnot. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to take this board, which is up there. Because if you look at this van, you'll, uh, I don't know if you can see that actually. But either way, the floor isn't level. It, it dips down here towards the front and then it's lifted up towards the back. When I build my stuff, uh, the big thing I need to figure out is what the difference is in height between here to here. And then that way I can just um, cut my, uh, my feet or, and whatnot so they're the right height. So um, I'll show you basically how I'm going to do that here in a sec. What we're going to do is we're going to take this board, kind of put it, uh, we can see that the back is mostly level at the same spots we need it, so that'll work fine. And so we're going to stack a bunch of wood up here. It's actually pretty simple, we're just going to crib it up. And then what we're going to do is throw the old level on her. And as you can see, oh this thing doesn't like to focus very well. Um, as you can see, there we go. Uh, the bubble level shows that the front is still a little bit low or a little bit high so I've got these guys so let's I'm not sure how that looks so sorry if it's bad but you might be able to see it I need to get my tripod into uh, motion here voila and that gives me a pretty accurate uh, pretty accurate level. Um, I think that should be good enough for what I need for my van because um, it doesn't have to be perfectly level um, in all honesty because the van's never going to be sitting 100% level anyways. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room but I mean if it was out a full six inches in level I mean I'd feel that all the time so make it as level as possible and hope I can park on level ground is kind of the uh, <laughs> the big thing but I might at some point pick up some of those RV uh, those plastic blocks you stick under the tires and then I can level the van off if I'm in sort of unlevel territory or something I'll figure it out so yeah that's uh, working on getting the floor and the big shelf in there and more progress to come so Jackson's helping me in the back of the van and as you can see here we are taking out all the uh, plastic trim panels and um, exposing as much space inside as, uh, as I can get. I'm gonna keep the heater core in here um, so I can blow heat back here if, if I can get it working here before I leave. But as you can see, it's a big nasty mess. I thought about pulling it out, but it occurred to me that there could be a lot more complications than I'm comfortable with. So, we've got all this stuff. And then the Ventures also, they come with these, uh, they had a panel um, for a compressor. 
and um, it had all these controls and these uh, focus, focus, like me in school, focus Robert, focus. <laughs> um, so it had this little air spigot here. Um, I never had the accessories or the hose for it, but um, as far as I understood, you could actually use it to blow up your tires, um, which is kind of a neat feature. But we took all that out. I don't need it. I have an air compressor with me that'll run off the inverter. So, so we're gonna tie all this up and hide it back in here. And then I can actually build my shelf a lot lower now here, which we'll see here hopefully soon. And yeah, so we're having a lot of fun with like body clips here. Um, if any of my viewers have ever dealt with body clips in any kind of vehicle, you know our pain. You know our pain. Because they're all hidden back there somewhere just waiting to break. But luckily nothing has to go back on, so if they break it's no big deal. I've made some progress, as you can see. Um, it's not as much as I would like. <laughs> um, a lot of challenges in trying to actually uh, make things work in the van. What I've started with is the computer workstation. And I've got a lot of work to get this all finished, but uh, the hard part was figuring out exactly how to put this in the van. There's a lot of challenges with that because there's movement every which way. So while this is going to be down to the floor right here, what I've decided to do is run two two by fours flat to uh, put the maximum amount of force over the most area for the weight of this, as well as I went edge to edge to give it bracing for moving side to side overall. And the next thing I had to do, this was the really tricky part actually, was to get uh, level uprights or as close to level as I could get. Now I'm on a level floor so I can I can figure it all out in here. And as you can see it's pretty close. Once I get the cross braces in it should level out. And what I've decided to do is rather than bolt these in from below because I want to be able to pull this apart and out as easily as possible but it has gotten harder already. So we've got them on plates basically that I was able to bolt into from above plus that helps to disperse any weight um, better and disperse it onto this board. I will decide at some point whether or not I'm going to fully attach this to the van. I don't want to put any bolts through the metal down here especially if I can help it. I already have to drill a hole to run tubing from the batteries to um, ventilation so that I don't kill myself in here with H2S and hydrogen. Batteries like to gas out when they're charging. When I put this together, I want to plan on putting another one of these big batteries in and, and I don't know, I'll do something with this battery. I might just hold on to it in storage or give it away or return it for core return on one of these. So I'm putting together the battery container and I'm screwing it in from the bottom and I'm always an advocate for good old carpenter's glue in joints and this will increase the uh, the uh, structural strength of the whole thing. Okay so I've got this all glued and screwed in. I cut a plate to put on the bottom to make sliding the batteries in and out a lot easier. So what I've decided to do here is I'm going to hold the batteries down with a cargo strap. I've determined this will be the easiest hassle-free way for me to get the batteries out, have enough headroom above the batteries without having to struggle there, and then I can just worry about setting my shelf height kind of wherever without uh, making it hold the batteries down. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go around and I'm going to uh, make it lock itself as well as put a couple screws in here to hold it to the, uh, to the frame. So to attach the other side what I've done is I've decided to retain the hook and not cut this strap so it has maximum strength and then I notched out the, uh, the side um, board here, uh, the side stud and I notched it out so the hooks can get in there and then what I did just to keep it from falling out, 
um, I just notched out this little piece of wood here to basically go over there and hold that in place. And then I left a gap open so that there's uh, room for cable runs underneath of the, uh, of the box. So it should be together here in a sec. So I got myself a little um, percolator and I'm actually going to try it out here tonight with some coffee and see how it works. So, pretty basic little unit, it's got the little percolator thing that goes in there, got a pot for the coffee, ooh, okay, so we're going to try making some coffee and uh, see how it tastes, yummy. Back at it with the coffee here, um, it turns out this, and it was only 30 bucks, the outside's in good, good quality, but this inside actually is, um, this uh, stem part was uh, uh, crooked and I bent it and it feels like it actually could break really easily. I think it's made out of aluminum. So I got the water in there. Um, we'll grind up some coffee, throw it in there, but we can start warming it up. So let's turn this puppy on, shall we? Okay, and... Hopefully we don't get too much gas buildup. Okay, there we go. And yep, we'll get our boiling. Okay, and we'll grind up some coffee in the old grinder here. I'll have this with me. I can run this off the inverter pretty easily. And some Starbucks breakfast blend. I might go with cheaper beans, but I don't think I'll change from beans. I might buy some backup ground coffee just in case I have problems with the inverter or something, but. But, um, okay, I'll grind that up. Not gonna record that because it's loud as can be, but look at those, look at those delicious beans. Mm. They're all oily and delicious. Okay, so I'll grind this up and uh, we'll start making some coffee. I hope you can kind of see something there. I don't know, I can't see the screen where I'm at. Let's dump some coffee in here. Oh yeah, it comes right through. <laughs> okay, we're all maybe adjust how much I'm grinding it for this thing. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it tastes. I don't mind a little bit of grounds in my coffee. I could always work something out to throw a bit of paper filter in here or something too. So. Um, okay, so I've got that much in there. I don't know if you can see that. So Oh, we'll see how that goes. So we stick her on there. Oh wow, that's already getting like... Woo. I do love... Uh, I do love cooking with gas, to be honest with you. You can't actually simmer on an electric stove. Everyone's all like, oh, I love saran tops! And I'm like, oh, yuck, saran tops are gross. They're so bad for cooking, in my opinion. Easy to clean, but that's it. So, we'll let that start to boil and percolate, and we'll see how things go. Okay, so she's a bubbling and a boiling away here. I'm not sure exactly how long it should perk for, but... We'll pull it off the burner. Then we got ourselves a cup. Put this lid back on. And cloth because it's kind of hot. Well, it looks like it might be kind of good. I'll get back to you in a sec with the flavor results. Okay, so cream and sugar is added. I haven't tasted it yet. I wanted to catch this live on camera. Okay. Oh, thank goodness I am actually decently pointing this thing at myself. Okay. Here we go. Mmm, it's very hot.
Good enough for the girls Paul goes with. I'll explain that in an episode one day, what that means. But actually, no, that's, uh, that's actually pretty decent. I'm, uh, I'm pretty damn happy with that. Sweet! Yay, coffee maker! So I've decided to use this three-quarter inch oak I have managed to have around as the uh, bottom shelf for the monitors and as well as the top, the top brace, you'll see that in a minute here. And um, in order to get a straight nice cut on this, I need to basically um, bolt a 2x4 to it to run my skill saw along or else I'll have a wavy cut and that won't work uh, to put the panel on the front like you'll see here. So that's how you uh, you make up for a table saw when you don't have one and you've only got a skill saw. It's one dirty solution. So, Okay, so here's the thing about oak. It's a bitch for slivers, so it's always a good idea to give it a sanding and break the corners. Try and cut down all the catch points. Um, that way you're not dying of of sliveritis. So that worked not too bad. Got a decent, nice, consistent three inch piece of uh, stuff here. So that's good. Now I'm going to hack it up into bits. So I just finished building up the uh, main framework for the computer tower. And I uh, kind of came up with a cool thing. There was this extra space up here because this monitor is uh, a fair bit shorter than the other monitor. So it had this extra space. So I actually just extended the brackets for the monitor up and added these tabs at both ends. So now I can keep little containers up here and they're easy to get out and they shouldn't fly out of there unless I'm really on some bumpy stuff going a million miles an hour. Hopefully that's not happening. Now that I've got the main computer tower framework kind of built up, plumbed out and uh, leveled out, I've decided that uh, before I build anything else in there or do anything with that, I need to get the back started and figure out my overall space I might want to retain the possibility of having the full four foot width here um, to be able to put stuff across. So I want to actually build it in such a way that we'll utilize that, but I've also realized that in case there's really long stuff, I might want to actually keep open the possibility that I might need to run long stuff through and into a spot in here. So I don't want to start doing shelves there until I'm absolutely certain what I'm going to be doing back here. And then I can kind of finish building that up once I, once I know that. So obviously the other issue I'm going to be dealing with is how do I get as much free movement space for myself as possible in here. The last two or three days here have been rainy, which has uh, made me actually realize how long I could be trapped in the van for the most part. I'm going to do as much to get out as possible, um, find places to go walk that are maybe out of the rain and whatnot, visit people and whatnot. But for periods where I still may be stuck in here for a day or two, I need a little more movement to get my legs out than I maybe originally thought. So what that's changing with its design as well is that I might, I was originally going to come to the middle and put the bed right in the middle and then I was just going to go boop with the bed. What I've decided is that I need to keep a little bit of, of uh, open space down here. So what I want to do is actually make the bed so that it, it half folds out and comes back in and maybe makes a bench right here. And then with my counter um, sort of up here or whatever. And then I can kind of sit there and um, perhaps do something while still keeping stuff stored on the floor though. So what I want to do, and we'll see how that works out here, is I kind of want to build a framework that comes up and keeps it all open underneath. 
And the bed will honestly be um, self-sufficient in a sense where I can actually just pull the top off. You could even throw it out of the van, both pieces or whatever. So it's not as permanently fixed as maybe I was originally thinking it was going to be. So I'm about to start the back framework now and uh, the first step is going to be putting down another foundation plank similar to this to disperse the load onto the uh, these things basically uh, these are basically load carrying structures uh, stamped into the metal but that's where I preferably want to land with a nice even load all the way across. As you can see, sometimes the, the floors actually get crushed and if you actually look here, you can actually see that these ones have been pushed down and the reason for that is we at one point were loading auto scrubbers for cleaning into the van and the the wheels with their narrow point of pressure <clears throat> landed up crushing these um, which slightly weakens the overall structure of the van which sucks but it shouldn't be enough to be to be serious so to prevent that in the future of course the idea here with these uh, load bearing uh, foundation planks is to prevent uh, that kind of crushing and to, to even my load everywhere. So at, at no point anywhere on the metal do I want a single piece of wood coming down and sitting on top of it. Because it will, it will punch through it. This won't. This won't. Any, any um, bouncing force, all the point of pressure is being put into this plank and then uh, distributed fairly evenly more so right there, but uh, this helps to actually take a little bit of that force and pressure and helps distribute it there. That actually also, by coming across all the way too, it actually makes this more stable and prevents it from tipping over too. So to put my foundation plank in, I took this 2x4 cut to 59 inches. Actually a little bit less now, but that's the width between here to here. I cut it uh, to 59 and then I notched out uh, both ends and the reason I did that is so that they would fit in this space here because it's not a full um, two and a half inches here or uh, sorry it's not a full three and a half inches it's only about three inches um, maybe a little bit less as you can see I notched out I didn't really measure it I kind of drew it out just to no need to measure it it didn't need to be precise so I'm gonna put this in and the reason I did that, by the way, uh, is because uh, if you see these ribs here, this is what I want to get my load set on um, as much as possible. And the problem was, is if I push this any further forward, it wasn't going to be on enough rib to be satisfactory. Um, so I kind of split the load halfway and that caused me to have to be able to notch out this 2x4 here so that I could uh, get both foundation boards where they needed to be. So I'm going to stick this in here. Two things um, of fairly big consideration. I've got this main electrical uh, trunk here. And then uh, over here I've got a little bit of wire but that's up there. But the other thing I have to keep in consideration even though it doesn't work is there's this tube here for the windshield washer fluid. Now uh, I, it sprays fluid, but uh, the wiper doesn't work, so I don't really use it anyways, but I don't want to puncture it or wreck it or anything. I might fix that wiper one day, and I also don't want it suddenly shooting uh, washer fluid all under the framework here. So, uh, if we can see that on the video, I don't, it's probably really hard to tell, but the rib drops off right near the edge so that that can go underneath. And then all along here, it'll actually ride underneath. So I just got to be careful not to pinch that when I put that in place. So it turns out that this corner actually uh, rises up back in here a bit. Ish. And I was having a little bit of trouble with it fitting. And I wanted to make sure there was some clearance right in the very corner. Because there's, there's not really going to be much load there. And even if I do land up putting uh, something here to take some load... It's going to be dispersed along the rest of it anyways. 
So in order to do that, I had to trim off the edges like so. So I sort of tapered them. And I did this on the miter saw in the safest way possible. And now that should leave enough clearance in that corner. So no troubles with the hoses or no troubles with catching on the wheel well. It should be, should be good. Okay filmmakers, finally a little bit about filmmaking and not the van. This is a flashlight um, that I picked up from Redhead Equipment, which is an agricultural and construction equipment uh, dealership, as well as a service department. Um, big place, they sell all kinds of big stuff like combines and dirt movers and all that. Um, so, but I picked this up maybe about a year ago. Um, it was on sale and I used to clean there so I, I happened to see it when I was cleaning one night and I was like oh this is really awesome and uh, and it actually happened that my mom went and picked it up for me um, as a birthday present. This, uh, this little guy is really neat though. It's got this uh, clip that swivels so you can stick it in your uh, jacket pocket so it shines light outward which can be handy maybe if you're doing a first person interview. And the other thing obviously it works really well on is like feeling small uh, dark corners like this where I just can't get these lights to shed any light in there and as you can see I, in that last segment there I was showing you uh, how this corner is raised up a little bit in the corner but it's really hard to see that here and I could edit and post and brighten it all up and stuff but nothing beats actually getting a little bit of light down there and as you can see that just adds everything I need there and it balances well with my other lights and as you'll see in this clip right here this is a commercial I did for FPF promo for, to put on their website and whatnot you'll see in here I actually stuck this right inside of his printer so I could illuminate in there um, and just get enough light to put a little bit of highlights on the edges and stuff so you could actually make out the details a lot better and it completely made the shot it would have been kind of a muddy ugly shot had I not uh, done that so these are really great, about 12 bucks. Uh, they work really well and they're great for more than just uh, light for shooting too. They're just great handy lights for anywhere you need light. So check those out. It is um, uh, Larry by Nebo and that's N-E-B-O. More cool filmmaking stuff a little bit later. But for now, I gotta get the rest of this van done. Okay, it turns out that because there's there's no ribs back here, there's ribs going forward from this main rib, but none coming back. So what happens is when I put this 2x4 on here, um, it has a natural tendency to want to float backwards. Now the way I'm building it's going to have the angled pieces like this, which means that for the most part the load's always going to land on these ribs where it should land. But in a situation where you know things are rocking back and forth and whatnot I don't want to leave this great big gap over like because it would be all along there so to just help even it out help reduce vibrations and stuff what I'm doing is I'm gonna put these uh, strips of plywood with some mono silicone caulking it's just bathroom caulking and all it's gonna do is just help keep these from from popping out from underneath the plank um, but I don't want them permanently fixed at all. Uh, they don't need to be. I'd prefer not to. And I don't want to use screws down here either as much as possible because if I put screws in here, A, I'm wasting a lot of screws. And uh, for two, because the plywood has compressibility compared to a screw, if load happens to land on them long enough, what will happen is that screw head will start to push against the metal and uh, it's just not ideal so we'll do it this way instead looking pretty decent it's got an angle, it's got a very shallow angle on it, not much, so that'll be easy to cut. And we can start uh, working on the back one and then start building up some framework in here. 
In order to attach to the back, I realized right away the curvature up towards the top of the door here is not ideal where my, uh, f where my footing plank was landing here. So what I've done is I've built this whole unit here by screwing a bunch of 2 by 2s to that plank and contouring them to fit into this kind of uh, rounded off space here as well as extended this one which goes towards the front and that's where the uh, counter leg will sit. So we're going to put that in here and see how it works for us. Well, it fits better than OJ Simpson's glove. Uh, so we're winning. As you can see it sort of is built to accommodate uh, all this hood latch stuff back here and whatnot, and then it pushes out my footing space to land the leg that's going to attach across for the counter here as well as the overhang plus in order for me to do anything in this corner at all uh, I didn't have enough material here but as you can see there's these cargo hooks here I don't know if we can see that one there's these cargo hooks in the van that I actually wanted to make use of because they're bolted in to the uh, frame the subframe here and that's why I put this board initially behind there because it, it'll keep it from sliding forward in a hard stop. But it put it too far into the curvature to be able to give me any useful material over here. So now I can attach back here without any worry and I can basically avoid having to deal with uh, this space up here as much as possible. So I'll probably build up over beyond that. So the kitchen's coming together quite nicely. I bridge the ceiling. Next I'll install the countertop as well as get the sink installed and we'll see how that goes. So it was only a matter of time before I got myself a sliver. You can't work with a little lumber and not get a sliver so there she is. So I'm gonna try and rip this puppy out. Got the old uh, first aid kit going here with a few of my favorite things. My Ulfa knife, polysporin, and some antiseptic. So we're gonna we're gonna cut this out. Look ma, I'm a, a TLC surgery special. Some anesthetic would be nice. Come on, come on. Ooh, she's in there good. Come on. You fucking... There we go. So, I don't know if that's showing up there, but... The active medical ingredient in polysporin uh, is actually uh, magic. Because it will heal a wound in like a day, day and a half sometimes. It's insane, but a little bit of sting, but it does have the uh, painkiller in it, so it'll numb it up a little bit. So it shouldn't bug me too much while I'm working. I'm about to put the counter in, and I just finished putting this... Uh, this kind of U-brace, and I'll modify it in a bit, but I'm just kind of temporarily putting it in here. But what I'm trying to do right now, and why this has become so absolutely tricky, is right now is the point where I need to make sure that these uprights are uniform. So they're straight up and down, and everything's level, and I get everything as level as possible. And that's pretty tricky, because there's f uh, four points I need to do and then I need to measure level on a couple of these. So just watch, yeah, as I kind of struggle to put that together.
Okay, I've been trying to come up with a way to make a shelf up in this corner and fill up this space as much as possible. And uh, I didn't want to put a leg down here because of the way I'm setting up the bed. And I don't quite have enough room to actually get past all this crap. So it turns out that there's actually this square hole in the frame um, in exactly the perfect spot. It's clear of the door here. So that works perfectly for a carriage bolt. And of course, uh, those who don't know what a carriage bolt is, as you can see, it's got this squared part. Um, and these all have proper engineering terms. I don't know what they are. And then it's got this um, rounded head here. And the idea is, is it holds still while you screw it in. So I'm going to use this magnetic pickup tool here so that I can go in here, hopefully, and grab onto it, and voila, it doesn't turn. Now, the bolts I had happened to be uh, a little bit too long. They actually came out to about here or so. So what I did is I put some black electrical tape, after, once I sized this board up, put some black electrical tape around here and cut it off with a metal saw and um, I finished up the edge so that the bolt wouldn't get caught on the, on the uh, threads on the end that got, get damaged by the saw. So I did that on my uh, little bench grinder. So now, I'm going to put this on there. Now what I also did is I prepared this, I drilled a nice uh, fairly level hole through it. I had to notch out the back side to allow for that square bit, some space to get in there. So it sits flat against this, see this, this face here too is flat, which is also a huge advantage because it's actually going to hold it fairly level right there. And then I also had to uh, ream this out a bit. and. I actually realized I didn't quite do it enough, so I'll be back in just a sec. Okay. <clears throat> Voila! Now it's definitely deep enough to completely hide this bolt. This magnetic tool is amazing. So, we'll get that nut on there, and this is just temporary, I'll actually put Loctite on here to make sure it doesn't come loose um, during the vibration of road travel. I think that's a pretty good start. Now I'll just work on leveling it off by putting a leg on the other far side there. So here we are with the driver's side shelf in. I'm about ready to finalize up the bench and bed area. Check this out. So that'll come out and I will build a shelf off the top of that still. I had a bit of empty space uh, right in there uh, where the wheel well was. I was like, well, I should use that. That's a lot of wasted space. So I took some of my 1x8 and I trimmed it down to 5 inches and made that little cubby there. Neato, eh? And then the top will bolt down with the shelves on it and this area will be set up. So I took a little break, a little mini pizza break there and um, I came across the 12 volt cigarette lighter plug that was in the back of the Chevy Venture before. They had one back here as an extra accessory. And uh, I decided to go ahead and drill a hole with it and install it into my panel here. And I'm just about to test it, make sure it's still working. Haha! -ha. Check that out. Now I have a handy 12 volt plug in the back of the van. That is super awesome. I'll probably land up actually when I do some of my uh, lights on the ceiling here. When I install some of those LEDs, I'll probably run them off of this 12 volt supply. That way I don't have to run any end, uh, wires all the way from the front, I can just run them off of here. Awesome! So I sort of dummy set up the bed and seat so I could get an idea of how things were feeling.
It's a good thing I did because what I found is the height I was originally going to go for was actually too high and I was uh, cranking my neck to get in here. Um, it kind of sucks because now I'm going to lose all this extra space down here. I'll have to deal with that somehow but I should still be able to get at least one milk crate and a toolbox and something else under here so we'll see hopefully we can get as much as possible under here and um, I also decided to bring the bed almost full right to the back of the seat I was originally gonna leave it slightly back so I had a little bit of a walkway but due to the complexity of it and everything else and I would actually lose this extra bit of storage space here I decided to just bring it out here and and deal with it as best as I can so yeah um, next I'm gonna start hacking up these boards and getting them uh, uprights in to hold them up and we'll figure it out from there so well that's that So no more working lights in this fixture. That really sucks because these lights are super expensive and each one takes five and there's already burnt out ones in the other ones. Plus now there's God only knows what mercury and everything around here. That is really disappointing. So, I decided to take a break from the shop in the van and I came out east of Lloyd to this oil field lease site where I have a lot of open field and whatnot to play with light. So we just had a really good play and a tug of war and all that and he's going to be a little bit exhausted for tonight, which is good because I've got a lot of work to do in the van still. So, oh, fuzzy caterpillar. The sun's going down so I should probably get back to the shop. I'm getting eaten alive out here. Definitely time to go back. So, back to the bed, or the bench as you might want to call it. So far I've assembled one leg and this is going to be the origin point or the uh, baseline point. And then I'm going to actually trim these up to level off this section. I've already got this uh, leg assembled but nothing's fixed down and I'm going to fix this board on top of it. Or, uh, sorry, I'm just going to set this board on top of it and I'm going to get it as level as I can and we'll do that by trimming little bits of this out until it's, until it's as level as possible. And then we'll do the uh, level across this way. the day's getting a little too long because I put that one on wrong the angle is backwards I kind of feel like a dummy now so back to the drawing board on that one way to go Rob luckily I was able to salvage everything and now it's all good to go so I'm ready to actually start securing this thing down woohoo okay so that makes the grand total of screw-ups too many and I went and cut my leg a little bit too short here and the question is do I remake it or do I just shim it? I think I'm actually just gonna shim it. It'll be good enough, I hope. But it's level now and uh, for the most part it's starting to look like a thing. It's starting to look like a something. So I just pulled back into the shop after running some errands and I noticed on the shop floor that I've got oil drops. It is engine oil and it's leaking out of my engine. So I am going to have to take a closer look. I think I know what's causing it. It's most likely the uh, oil cooler which uh, I had my friend Richard Lozo weld up and seal shut because uh, it was broken and it was pushing oil into the coolant. So 
I'm pretty sure it's coming from there and something probably went wrong with the seals or there's a pinhole in uh, one of the welds. So we'll get under there take a look at that. It's not a whole lot of oil so I can drive fine. I might have to add some but I don't also like throwing oil into the streets. So we'll work on that soon. Well folks, that's it for episode 2. Thanks for watching. Make sure to tune in next week for a whole new episode and watch my progress as I work to finish up the van in time. So make sure you like, share, and love this video as well as subscribing to my YouTube channel. And a huge shout out to everybody who liked, loved, and shared my post. It was awesome, really close to my heart, made me feel really good, so thank you. And I'd like to take a sec to thank my supporters and sponsors. First off, I'd like to thank Joshua Weaver for all of his help and providing me with uh, the shop and some extra work to help make some cash and whatnot. Um, and uh, his companies, uh, JJW Vending, Sweet Space Building Care, and Vend Media. And a big shout out to Rich Lozo and Liquid Metal Custom Fabrication and Welding. He is putting together a roof rack for me and that's a huge bonus because it'll give me a bunch of extra room. So thanks a lot to Rich and Liquid Metal. And finally my good buddy Jackson Willman who has been helping me on various parts of the van. I really appreciate it man and uh, hopefully I can get you out for a little bit more before I'm done here. And of course if you'd like to uh, help me out with support or sponsorship um, I can work with uh, businesses or individuals. I'm also setting up a Patreon account and I'll put the link out as soon as I get that finished set up. And what Patreon is, is that uh, you're able to contribute a small amount monthly to help me continue to create content and to help keep me doing what I'm doing. And of course, if you are watching me on YouTube, maybe click on the ad so I can make a little bit there. So that'd be awesome. Thanks, everybody. Hi, thanks for tuning in for episode two of this boring series. I'm your host, Boring Guy. Come on, come on. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Don't you hate it when your cream starts to turn into butter? Oh no, my battery's gonna die. Mother frickin' poopy poop. Um, okay, here's the deal. We'll do another take. So, um, in episode two, we are gonna put this all together, and you will see it from here on in start to come together. No, you know what? I should do that at the very end. Once it's all together, it should be like, how did we get here? How did we get here? I should even do the welcome to episode two then. And maybe put that in the bloopers. Okay.